Having spent 16 years in uh, maritime human performance research, uh, my absolute priority for the next five years is to change the design to, to make it more operable for the uh, seafarers. We spend at the moment a lot of time on reactively uh, creating a learnings from the bad events, but we don't monitor what is going on positively and we don't also understand the contribution of design into the uh, human error. So if we have the right methodologies and if we put enough effort on, the de uh, on developing these design methodologies, we can achieve a safer design and the human operators can perform better and safer ship operations. Of course, we uh, last three, four years, we spent uh, our time on uh, a safe mode project, which was uh, focusing on uh, developing a human risk-informed design framework. Uh, the approach, uh, it was a collaboration between uh, two sectors. So we had aviation and maritime cooperating in safe mode project. Uh, we developed uh, taxonomies for accident investigation. And we also developed uh, tools for designers and various, uh, for various stakeholders, uh, whether they are new to human factors or they are, uh, they are basically advanced uh, uh, human factors uh, specialists. There are uh, human factor compasses that was made available for their usage so they can design their route towards handling human factors issues. We also developed safety culture uh, assessment applications and human performance capability profiling tools for the organizations to assess their levels of human factors readiness. So they can design, uh, they can assess and analyze their current level of uh, human factors implementation and they can de uh, decide goals for them to improve their uh, compliance. I think as we look ahead, at the moment we see technology evolving very fastly and we start uh, seeing the uh, utilization of AI uh, coming in every field almost. We will start seeing more and more human operations possibly will be taken by, by, by certain uh, elements, but we see that this is not going to be replacing the human. So we will use these technologies to assist human operations, to make the operations safer, rather than saying that these this, uh, new systems and technologies will be replacing our valuable human assets. Because uh, in our opinion, human factors and the human element on board is a, a key resource for safety. Human, uh, our crew members on board so today's vessels, they are the, the safety barrier that we need. They are resilient, they are flexible, they can deal with unexpected, with other new systems cannot uh, give us what, 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 uh, uh, this at all. I think we are going through a huge, a very fast uh, innovation rate at the moment. A lot of new things, things are coming. We are uh, bringing technological innovations, which is coming from the new AI and computer science developments. We also have pressures coming from the decarbonization uh, goals that ships need to implement new technologies which are uh, emitting less emissions and etc. towards achieving net zero. So all these new technologies will create um, a pressure on the human operation. We will expect human on board to deal with the new challenges and we do not properly I think understand how this, uh, this, this new technologies or alternative fuels and the risks come together with them will be able to handle by the by the crew members on board. So we need a very systematic approach to study these and uh, and ensure that what we bring on board is is safely operable by the uh, crew members we have at the moment. I would uh, I would change the perception. Uh, of the industry. I would change the way we look at uh, human factors and human error on board. I think we focus too much on the error, we focus too much on the assessment uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the human element on board, but I think we need to understand what drives their performance and we need to focus on, uh, on driving performance on board. And there are a lot of uh, underlying factors uh, that, that kind of facilitate this uh, safe behavior and we need to increase our understanding on these aspects and, and make sure we rightly implement it and deliver it to the people. Uh, 
Uh, to foster more sustainable future uh, for the in terms of human factors or human safer operations, sustainable shipping operations, I think all stakeholders need to collaborate together. We have a lot of lessons that need to be learned from various uh, stages of operation. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a very good connection between at the moment. For example, we design ships uh, as naval architects on our end without properly understanding how the operation of these vessels are, are conducted. And in the same way, we also put procedures and, and other uh, materials in place without clearly explaining the thing. So when we start collaborating, the design will work for the human, the procedures will work for the human, and human will excel in that operation, uh, and we, which is going to deliver a more sustainable future. Another thing which is also related to collaboration uh, is we, as stakeholders, we have uh, academia, industry, regulators, uh, and human factors involve everything. We do human factors research. Uh, regulators try to bring new, uh, new regulations to, to put safety barriers in place. And operators need to understand and implement. We don't have a clear uh, communication and collaboration framework at the moment. And when we co start collaborating, I am sure these uh, advancements will speed up and we will achieve that sustainable uh, operations.